Ladies and gentlemen, the Shred Gaming Citicom video. While the R9 300 series rumours and speculation has died down just for the last couple of days, a lot of stuff has been happening on NVIDIA's front. So we're going to be clarifying the specifications of the Titan X. I know you're all dying with anticipation to know the final specifications of the GPU. Well, maybe I overhyped that just a smidge. But the main focus of this video is actually to unveil NVIDIA's roadmap. And this goes from 2015 all the way to 2018. And just to give you a hint of where NVIDIA are going with this, hey, you know that GPU, which may or may not be the Titan X, which has 12 gigs of RAM? That's a lot, right? 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 No! Turns out not so much, because NVIDIA wants to massively increase this. In fact, they believe that the Volta architecture will be bringing in a staggering 64 gigabytes of VRAM. So that's a lot of VRAM. But first of all, let's touch on the Max, the Maxwell, or rather the high-end flagship Maxwell, which of course is the Titan X. So we'll we'll go through that first. Most of this you can probably recite with me. So this is based on gigabyte this is their official specifications so it is a gm200 gpu 3072 cuda cores 12 gigs of ram we all know that 384 bit memory interface the main primary purpose of this is to go through the core clocks so the base clock is 1002 megahertz and it boosts up to 1089 eh, not bad it's going to have a requirement of 600 watts, which is one six pin and one eight pin. Pretty much what we expected is is in the is in the ballpark. Um, and it's got the usual smattering of DVIs, HDMIs, Display Ports, and all of the other bits and bobs that you'd expect on a GPU of this nature. Although to be fair, it does actually have quite a few Display Ports. It actually has three of the blighters, which is a lot of blighters. Um, so, the main purpose of this video, as I said, was mostly the architecture. So, we don't have a full range of specifications of the future, but what we do know is that there's going to be a lot of shiners coming up. Um, Pascal, and there's also, of course, going to eventually be Volta. Now, let's discuss Pascal. Uh, Pascal architecture is going to be mixed precision, 3D memory, and NVLink. Now, we don't know the exact performance. NVIDIA have not gone on record and said, you know, this GPU gets 3,000 3D marks, and this GPU is going to get 6,000 3D marks, and so on. Obviously, I'm just kind of pulling figures out of my butt there. But roughly, NVIDIA are aiming for the following. Two times floating point performance of Maxwell. 2.7, bit of an arbitrary number, but 2.7 times the memory capacity of Maxwell, and also four times mixed precision of Maxwell. He also said that Pascal is going to be 10 times faster. Now, 10 times faster is going to be bandwidth and compute performance. Um, roughly, those each are going to be five times the performance of Maxwell. There's also going to be an interlink of the GPU. Now this interlink is going to double the performance, uh, giving Maxwell 10 times what Maxwell can offer. So this is going to be pretty cool stuff. The next few years are going to be massively, massively influential in the GPU industry. I've said this a billion times and we can all recite the technology so I won't go through all of them, but virtual reality, free sync, G-sync, adaptive sync, whatever the ball sync you want to call it. Um, you know, all of these different technologies are coming out. And, of course, we can't forget DirectX 12, which is going to be pretty instrumental, and it's not just DirectX 12. We've got, of course, uh, the Vulkan API, which I still need to do a full breakdown for. I'm waiting for the bloody GDC slides, uh, which are being rather slow to unveil. Um, and all of these other bits and bobs which are coming out, it's really the GPU is in the heart of these. And um, it's like... Without the GPU, modern day gaming would suck, is pretty much what we're going. So over the next few years, 
we know that these technologies are going to be something that the GPU manufacturers need to rely on. Pascal's memory bandwidth is estimated to be 750 gigabytes per second. Now, we don't exactly know what that's going to be in terms of, you know, is it also going to be 750 gigabytes per second with some efficiency as well? Most likely, the architecture is going to be considerably more efficient also. Um, and basically, NVIDIA are really pushing towards three times the amount of bandwidth of Maxwell. In other words, these GPUs are going to be a killer. And this is why I've been saying for some time that, you know, this is going to happen 2016, 2017. If you've got a really good GPU set up right now, um, you might be better to wait. On the other hand, the 300 series is looking kind of tempting, so who the hell knows. Anyway, Pascal, we know that, as I said, it's going to have a lot more memory as well. 12 gigs is nice, but Pascal is supposedly going to be bodging things up to 32 gigs, which is going to be standard for high-end models. Um... But Volta, which of course is the GPU after Pascal, it's like the successor, it's going to double this. It's going to go to 64 gigabytes of memory. That's a lot of memory. That's a lot of memory. Um, considering uh, it's going to have, I mean, Pascal is going to have four times the compute performance. That's FP16, so floating point 16. It's going to be fully connected, 3D memory bandwidth. It, basically, this is insane. Um, and to be totally honest with you, you might say this is overkill. You might say, well, how in the hell is 64 gigs of memory going to be filled? It, it's not possible. You say that, but just think of how much data textures are starting to take up. Think of how much data that compute. Think of how much data that... 4k is going to start really requiring and then think of that but in the future it's going to be big i mean now games if uh, you know if you're a pc gaming you'll know that a two gigabyte card you're probably going to be okay on 1080p to be totally honest unless you're running ssaa or msaa or really high values with everything at max yeah yeah you're going to be okay 1080p um Two gigs, you probably won't be too, you know, too bad off at all. Three gigs, you'll be pretty happy up to 1440p. Certain games, I'm looking at you, Crisis Free, can be like, I can have more memory, please. Especially at high resolutions if you're running SLI. When you start to get to 4K, however, that can really start to crimp the style of GPUs. And that's the thing with the new game engines which are coming out, like the new Source engine. We obviously have the improvements to Unreal Engine, and this is 2015, as you're probably aware. In two, three years' time, it's going to become a lot hungrier. And, well, I can't really think exactly how all of this memory is going to be used, because I'm pretty sleep-deprived, but I'm pretty sure that games developers can. Um, and memory, more memory, more bandwidth, more floating point performance is never a bad thing. And when you consider that, uh, let's say, virtual reality, at the moment virtual reality displays is like 1080p per eye, sounds great, but really we want higher resolutions in that end. You know, they are shooting for 4k per eye, so you're basically asking for twice the performance over like a 4k screen and even 5k is coming out and some some folks are running multiple gpus you know to surround monitors and of course i, I keep on discussing computing games it's becoming increasing increasingly critical not just oh look this is how a leaf is calculated to fall but also other things such as pathfinding artificial intelligence even even little things like helping um you know, calculate basic physics of the game's world. Like, you know, how does a character stay on the ground or how do they react when they're jumping? Cloth physics. There is a lot of stuff still to go. And we're nowhere near the performance levels of real life. Despite the fact that games do look pretty good, there's still a lot of stuff. Particularly when you're dealing with lighting. Um, lighting 
dynamic lighting, dynamic shadows, all of this requires an absolute gargantuan amount of computing performance, GPU performance to calculate the directions that shadows and lighting are coming in. The DirectX 12, just a while back, um, it Brad Wardell, that's the, that's the name, the name is slipping away from me, but Brad Wardell stated in an interview, or many times actually, even in his blog posts, that hey, at the moment, we're only using a couple of light sources, like two, three, four light sources, oftentimes to illuminate scenes, but it's not going to be like that. DirectX 12, you can have a dozen different light sources, more if you want, it really does depend on the hardware and the ability of the artists. And imagine if you're trying to create something absolutely huge, like an absolute massive cityscape with all of these different lightings and different, oh sorry, different light sources, with, especially at night. So for example, you've got the moon, you've got the stars, you've got the various city lamps and all of the other um, assets, for example, cars that are moving about, maybe people on cell phones, all of these different light sources you're trying, and you're trying to zoom a camera through those um, images, you know, all of those different models and different textures and different lighting. It's very expensive to calculate. And uh, yeah, anyway, I've, I've waffled on quite a bit on this video, so apologies for that. It was not meant to be quite this lengthy, but... Uh, yeah, this is what you get when you're tired. Well, this is what you get from me when I'm tired. That that probably is more appropriate. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.